Christmas to everyone. And uh, we on the board wish everyone a healthy and a happy new year as we look forward to uh, a healthy year. Uh, um, and so tonight is Monday, December 28th, and this is the Board of Architectural Review and Historic Preservation. It's now 7.05 and we are about to begin. Let me introduce our board members. Um, and just by dint of where they are on my screen, John Gregory, Peter DeWitt, uh, Sarah Latham, and Mark McIntyre. Uh, we have a quorum. And so, uh, and by the way, Sarah um, is not hiding. She just has some technical difficulties. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, with the introductions and the quorum present, uh, I move. Uh, the meeting of December 28th. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Okay. Second by Peter. All in favor, aye. Let me also introduce our council, Alice Cooley, um, our videographer, Kat Styler, and our recording secretary, Jackie Allen. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, first order of business are the minutes from the last meeting, um, that of December 13th, as everybody had a chance to review them and submit any edits? Yes. yes. OK. Uh, so if everybody has no objections, then I'll move that we submit uh, to the record and approve the minutes from December 13th. Do I have a second on that? Second. Peter seconds. All in favor, aye. 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 Uh, so for all those in the audience and who may at some point be listening on TV, uh, this is a additional meeting. Um, a makeup session, if you will. We went extremely long the last meeting and uh, um, asked those who were willing to adjourn to this meeting and some were just natural carryovers. Um, so we have a full agenda. Uh, we have some uh, requests for adjournments and anybody uh, for whatever reason, whether you're here, whether you're not here or um, not prepared. Um, any adjournments tonight will be without prejudice uh, to our next meeting on January 10th. Um, so uh, the first order of business after the minutes is that of written decisions. It's a, been a holiday week. So uh, Alice, I don't know if you have any prepared at this point. If you do, great. If not, um, we're happy to receive them on the 10th. I do not. Okay. Great. Uh, this is a time for family, and I hope everybody is spending time with family. So uh, there are priorities, and <laughs> family and friends are one, or two, excuse me. So uh, public hearings, historic. Um, we have, and I'll just read off the agenda, and by the way, trust, subtrust, A and B. Uh, they've requested an adjournment till February. Uh, Beachwood Latch LLC requested an adjournment from this evening. Uh, again, Alice, if we have to vote on it, we will. Otherwise, we'll just automatically move it to the next meeting. Uh, I would say just just that one because they were supposed to be on tonight. So any any others that were not already supposed to be on tonight, we don't need to vote on. OK, so I move that we accept the applicant's um, request uh, at the applicant being Beachwood Latch LLC 109 to adjourn to our next meeting on January 10th. Do I have a second on that? Second. Second by Peter. All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, we had a request submitted uh, at BHNH uh, to adjourn. Uh, so that's duly noted. Uh, Post Crossing LLC had adjourned pending ZBA approval. Uh, so noted. Uh, Fairlane Realty Corp um, is adjourned to January 24th. Um, again, duly noted. Um, so next up is that of uh, Alvise, um, and if I mispronounce your name, Alvise, let me know, Alvise Orzini and Jeffrey Van Remdonk at 143 Herrick Road. Um, is the applicant or the applicant's representative here? <clears throat> John Bennett is coming in. Okay. And Lisa Zaloga. Okay. Okay, John and Lisa, again, we hope you had a nice Christmas with family and friends. So please introduce yourself. 
It's it's John Bennett. I'm still recovering from the last hearing. <laughs> uh, yes, it was it was a long one, and we may look to all those on the screen and familiar with the process as to things we can do differently, including starting earlier, uh, and hopefully we, we would end earlier. Uh, so, but that's for another discussion, another time. Anyway, John and Lisa, introduce yourself, and then let's go ahead. Well, I'm John Bennett, Bennett and Reed, uh, Windmill Lane in Southampton. And Lisa, I think you might be muted, but I could be wrong. I'm here if you need me to talk. <laughs> okay. um, Lisa's here. I just, I, I think, I, I want to thank the board. Uh, I think the last meeting, <clears throat> there was a lot of flexibility on both sides. Um, but I'll, I'll have Lisa go uh, through this in, in greater detail if you need. But as I remember looking at my notes and um, and looking at what we've submitted, um, we uh, the columns in the front entryway were reduced to lighten the entry. And we brought back that Corbell detail. Uh, the planes of, planes of glass in the entryway will be rectangular planes with thicker mullions. We took down that stairways uh, leading down from the proposed terrace towards the driveway. We took that away. And then that interior brick wall between the original residence and the proposed addition will be retained. Uh, I think we swapped the window for the door just because it made more interior sense. Um, and I, I think, gosh, I'm sure hoping that, um, that we have uh, or where, where we need to be on this. I thought it was a great, uh, a uh, 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 meeting. So I hope I'm not being presumptuous, but I, I'd like to think that we heard everything that the board was saying, um, and uh, thank the board for uh, for working working on this with us. <coughs> Hopefully, unless there are any questions, uh, Lisa, did you want to add anything to what you'd submitted? No, I'm I'm uh, Kat's sharing her screen. I'm more than happy to share mine if the board has any questions. But I think that uh, we I, I think you covered it. Right. So Lisa. Um, and, and Kat can take us through um, the submission. She has what you submitted. Um, mm -hmm. Take us through the elevations and share with the board the changes that you made, uh, uh, because I, I know you had some left, right, existing and proposed uh, elevations. Sure, can I share my screen? So yeah, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> can you see it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so um, this is the uh, the first floor plan, the existing first floor plan, which shows the um, interior, well, currently exterior, but soon to be interior um, fenestration, which is the two openings on the south side, as well as the window and the door opening on the west side. Um, as you can see, we have maintained those openings um, for our new proposed plan, uh, showing the glass entry facade that we spoke about last time, and then the, the very glass-like um, proposed uh, one-story addition on the west side. Again, keeping the interior uh, brick wall and switching, as John said, the door and the window so that the kitchen still worked. We also got rid of the stair um, that was on the patio side that went to the east. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, we, we all remember this, this picture that we are trying to replicate. And in our elevations, we now show the keeping the corbeling that's there, as well as keeping the uh, much lighter kind of, uh, we got rid of lightened the posts and uh, and did that in the elevation. So, um, you know, you can see here, we, we lightened those posts as well, of course, as I think that, you know, the best, the best picture of course is, is this where you can see that we've definitely lightened those posts up and tried to recreate um, something very simple uh, as to what was there previously. So I don't know if the board has any questions, but I, I think we, I think we hit on all the points that that were mentioned at the last meeting. Yeah. Lisa, can, can you show and share with the board the elevations, uh, the, from the west, the west elevation? The west elevation, sure. Yeah, because I, I think that, well, both, both the east and the west, because they, they show 
the extensions. Right. So this is this is the existing west elevation, where you can see where the door and the window are, and this is the uh, proposed west elevation. Again, um, you know, a very light glassy um, facade, which, of course, the interior. Uh, facade wall here has also been maintained as you saw in the plans. Um, and this is the south elevation showing the the facade uh, without the stair that heads east and keeping again we talked about the corbeling and keeping the existing detailing on that porch um, and the uh, the lighter glass facade. The east elevation where you can see the um, this is the uh, enclosure at the entry. And then the beyond that, you can see the addition projecting forward. Again, no stair. I think that's, I mean, we have the north. Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, let me turn it over to the board. Um, <clears throat> I have some comments. Um, I think, you know, this is a, it's a very difficult uh, building to adapt. I mean, the main floor, is five feet above grade, which removes it from the, the pool deck. And the um, bedrooms are in the basement. And so the basement windows are high in the wall and um, make, I think, for less than attractive uh, bedrooms below. Also, the house has um, uh, limited circulation between floors. Um, and accordingly, you're um, you know, proposing a new interior stair. Right. My problem, the problem, remains with that, the, the plinth of the, that extends beyond the room, you know, the basement plinth that extends south beyond the room and that railing on, on top of it. I, I, it is better not having the um, steps on the other side. But I wondered if, if the, sta the stair down is taking an up, awful lot of space in the plan. And, you know, and it's not a design stair, it's a, um, it's a convenient stair, it twists the turns, it's get, it gets its job done, but I don't think you could call it a statement piece. Could you-, Are you refer, I just want to, you're referring to this interior stair here? Yes, yes I am. Okay. Okay. Could you make the second stair in the Northwest turret as it is in the Northeast turret that just would just go down? And then if you, on the cellar plan, if you can show the cellar plan, that stair would go away and you could push the program that's sticking out south towards Herrick, you could push that all in and use up that space that is now taken up with the stair. Um, I also think that the other thing that bothers me about it is that you've got bad bedrooms, I think they're bad bedrooms, and you're making more of them. And why not use this as an opportunity to fix at least two, a couple of them? And you could do that by excavating a court, a sunken court between the entrance elevation and the new extension. So that, you know, you could have a landscape embankment down to a, a grassy lawn. And then you could lower your sills in those bedrooms facing that lawn, you know, to like two feet to a normal sill height and, and really improve, you know, the inter interior environment of the, um, of the down stairs. And then of course, Upstairs, once you took that stair out, you would have a completely open plan to subdivide and divide and distribute the space as you wish. My oh, other, I, oh, I, what, just one more thing about the um, elevations. Um, on the rendering, it looks like the top of the new addition is a, a foot lower than it shows on the elevations. And I think the top of the elevation top of the new addition should be as it shows in the rendering, which is uh, below the corbels that are immediately, immediately beneath the um, frieze at the top of the one story addition. So, you know, I know that sort of is um, perhaps going further than you would like to hear, but I'd like to hear what, oh, and the other thing, the front entrance, it looks great by the way. Um, the only thing I would do, if you looked at the historic picture, the, um, where you have your door now, it was actually open. It was an opening. It was just, you know, uh, an opening. And if you kept that opening and moved the um, door in, yeah, see, there's that opening there, right? So no, that, you, that, that's actually, a, that's a, still a door. 
Oh, it is? It just happens to be open? Yeah, it just happens to be open in the picture. All right, I, I was concerned about the that. door being right at the top of the stairs. And I thought if you move the door to the left and then entered, uh, you know, to the, on the side of the porch towards the west, that it might solve a problem. But if it's not a problem, then forget I said it. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, I would just say in terms of the interior, uh, trying to put the stair in those towers, the the stair that, that currently exists is a spiral stair that takes you to the second floor over in the eastern tower. And it actually doesn't meet code, it, it's, it, but it's pre-existing non-conforming. Um, I'm not going to be able to fit a stair in, in, the, in this other tower here that would actually meet code, much um, less get furniture, you know, it, well, you have oh ground gosh, floor yeah. entrance. Furniture is not an issue. You've got entrances on both floors. Um, <clears throat> winders are allowed in, in houses. I mean, you're showing them in your new stairs. Well, winder, uh, winders I, are allowed, I, but, I, the, I, but there's a code for spiral stairs. There's a code for spiral stairs that would that would prohibit me from putting a stair in this in this tower and me meeting egress. Well, I um, I'm, well, uh, I don't think you're I don't think you're if you solved your bedroom window problem, you'd have egress there as well because the bedroom windows do not have egress either. Mm -hmm. They're up in the air and they're too small. Um, well, that's why these windows actually are window wells and they actually do meet egress. Okay. Every, every window that we have shown meets egress. Um, if, you, if you were trying, I, I think what you were saying was that you were thinking along the south wall here to make these windows here meet egress, which of course then kills your circulation through if you're well, trying- Well, no, actually, excuse me. I would, I would do your corridor across the north of the, of the uh, plan, a, a windowed corridor, and then all your rooms facing south. And I could you, I, I would like you to look at, I, I'm gonna look at the spiral of code myself, but perhaps we could both look at it independently and see if, you know, just verify what you're saying. Okay. That's all I have to say. What, I don't know what others have to say. Okay. Well, let's, let's hear. Others, I'll I'll chime in. I I, uh, I think you've uh, addressed a lot of the issues. Pretty much all the issues we discussed at the last meeting. I think the entrance looks really good. I think Peter, uh, you know, mentioned that as well. Um, I, I always appreciate additional ideas and and suggestions if it could help the final design. That is really you know something that you'll have to decide. But I based on what we discussed in the last meeting. I, it, it, uh, I think you've accomplished what we, what we, what we asked for. So I, I appreciate that. Okay, I do Sarah, and Mark. I have a question. Is the bottom of the front door a full stair height above? Like, do you have to step up a full tread height to open that door? You, do you open that door and then step a full tread height into the entryway? No, I, no, the, the, you step up kind of uh, into the, yeah, yes, I guess if you want to get technical, yes, you would step up into the door. As long as the door doesn't open out, that's okay. But if I open the door, there, it doesn't require a tread height before it goes down by code? The door, the door can, as long as the door opens in, and it's level, then it's okay. If it opened out, it's not allowed to open out over a tread. Okay. Um, that, that, that was one question. You did, you did address all the, all the questions you have. I, th I think the, I, you know, my one thought is the idea of excavating there to the left of the door and giving more light to the basement that way is an interesting idea. Um, but you have addressed everything we asked for. I, I, I still find the big protruding patio in the front a little heavy, but um, you did remove the stairway, which we asked for. Sarah, any comments from you? She's yeah, I, I have my hand up. So oh, okay. I'm not visible. <laughs> um, I, I think the, the idea of, a, of the spiral stair mimicking or, or aping the, the one in the up to the bedroom is rather a good idea. Um, I had not thought about um, excavating. I, I actually mentioned excavating, I, I believe it was the second meeting, but I think the idea of providing um, more, at first I thought, gee, I, I'm not sure about changing the height of those windows. Uh, 
But I, I think the idea of making them a, a, form of e a form of egress is rather a good one. Um, I also think that the idea that the rendering which appears to go below that, the, um, the corbels on the west elevation, I, I actually prefer that too, because the more of the west elevation that's, that's visible, the better. Um, I, I just said, want to say, uh, Sarah, I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just want to say that I think that the, you know, there's a slight pitch to that, to the, um, to the addition to keep it from being completely flat. And I okay. think that that's what you're seeing in the elevation. It is intended to be at the height that it's shown in the, in the rendering. So that I, both, for both of you, for both you and Peter, I just want to make sure that you understand. Yes, it is. It's just that there is a slight pitch in the middle that will keep the water from ponding on it. So I, I think that's probably why it looks different in the elevation. Well, the elevation looks like it's just to the top. It looks like the top of the addition is at the bottom of the freeze. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can make sure that, that, ha that that's correct. So it'll, be, it'll be at the bottom of the corbels. Correct. Uh, yeah. Look, okay. I think that makes it look, look, look more subservient to the original building. Right. Um, I still, I'm, I'm, I've said this from the beginning too, and I guess there's nothing to do about it, but I still still feel that uh, the addition is a little chunky. That, I know that's not an architectural term, but it appears to be the same width of as the um, the original ball castle. And I, in in that way, um, I, I, I don't feel it was subservient, but that's my take. Thank you. Um, I, I believe in the first rendition that was brought to you by um, by Bill Slate, they they did have um, window wells along the front, and I, I thought that there was some comment about the fact that they were changing the those windows on the south side. We tried to avoid that um, and and put them in the addition so that we were actually maintaining more of the south facade. I remember that from listening to the to the to the tape. The idea was to retain the integrity of the existing south, okay. south okay. facade. Okay. I just again, you know, it, it's just it's it's we're we're trying to <laughs> we're we're trying to do a thread a needle. Yeah, but I think that was uh, a, a fair to try to keep what's there, and that's okay. generally the direction okay. people want us to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I share, I think it was Mark or, or John who uh, made mention that the extension off the addition, uh, which is rides on top of the extended bedroom, makes the addition look, I guess, more massive than, than it is, or perhaps uh, more prominent and less subservient than would otherwise be the desired outcome. Um, and so Peter offers a suggestion where that would essentially be reduced if in fact, correct Peter, if in fact uh, you could do that stairwell. That's right, uh, it, would, it would be depending on that, yes. So the- uh, I, don't, I don't think that that, I mean, honestly, I, I you know, my client has looked at in terms of the stairwell and how he's gonna get in and out. And and the stair in that in that corner, I mean, you know, he would honestly love to get rid of the spiral stair and figure out a way to get up to the bedroom. Uh, it's very dangerous. I don't know if you guys have ever walked it, but it's yeah. it's a very scary okay. stair. Uh, and and Alvisa is not interested in in trying to put it in that in that tower <laughs> there. It just it, it's it's not for for you know five year old. Children, it's not the way he he wants to get to the basement. Yeah, He's trying to make it more of a more of a you know livable place. Yeah, and I I, I can appreciate that. And I think all of us at one point or another have experienced spiral staircases, and they can be uh, dangerous for Dip children and pets. <laughs> and, well, and also for mature people, uh, <laughs> and so. Yeah, that, that could be problematic. Um, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that perhaps as we move along in a collegial fashion, cooperative fashion, that could be explored, but I also see the difficulty in it. And the fact is that it, it may not meet code. Um, 
So let, let me first turn it over. To, is there any public comment out there? Oh, uh, let's see. No, sir. No public comment. Okay. Well, so, uh, the, sorry, get it, John. I, I find myself candidly um, a little bit frustrated here. I I thought. And again, it ain't over till it's over. And I understand that and I respect that. But um, this has gone a long way. It came in with a original project that, I mean, if it, honestly, if I had been asked, it was mere, pure mimicry. Uh, if I, that was before I came on board. If I had been asked, I would have said, don't, don't even present that application uh, because it was just trying to mimic what was there and like, like real, not the way you should go about adding on to a, uh, a contributing structure. But I, I think there's been a lot of push and pull and we've been very, very, very uh, flexible. And indeed, um, I, I will say, um, accepted a lot of the design suggestions. Um, <clears throat> gets a little tough because we start getting into interior design and stuff. And I know to a certain degree that may make other changes, but I think we've been very compliant uh, with 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 board requests, um, uh, so I actually had been hoping for um, mm -hmm. some sort of a, a sense of direction to Alice to write an approval to be candid with you. I I know even when you can shoehorn them in, and they're very very difficult to meet code those spiral staircases. I I don't think you should be in a situation where you're, with all deference, Peter, pushing someone in a contemporary uh, construction towards a, a spiral staircase. They're certainly not favored a, ma a matter of egress and egress, ingress and egress, unless you're talking about some huge, almost sweeping staircase as almost like an architectural statement somewhere. Um, so I don't know, I, I, listen, you yeah. know, I, I thought it's been a very, you know, uh, collegial uh, approach, uh, you know, uh, back and forth, uh, <clears throat> willing to make significant changes approach. I'm, I'm sort of scratching my head here. Uh, the introduction of those windows, I've been hearing them back and forth on. I did listen to the tapes and I'm sort of scratching my head how that's consistent with, uh, you know, the sort of limitations that you want to put on additions. That would be carving into the uh, contributing aspect of the structure, but I'll, 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 I think it's clear yeah. where I feel. And, well, yeah. repeating what John and Mark said, I mean, you've, you've addressed the issues and yes, John uh, and Lisa, you've addressed them well. There are maybe a, a couple of small points. Um, I don't know if the railing could be um, dim diminished in its, its presence through landscaping, which it probably will be. Um, although it's only a very light railing as it is. So I'm favorably, and favorably inclined. Um, uh, I think Peter's idea is extremely creative. Uh, I think though it does run us into a situation where you're gonna be either creating a, a dangerous um, situation or one that doesn't meet code. Um, anyway, uh, Peter and Sarah, do you feel strong, strongly uh, against the application or other aspects of it, or particular aspects? Uh, the only part I don't care, I mean, from the outside, um, forgetting about trying to solve the interior issues, the window issues, I realize that's beyond our uh, purview, just thought maybe I could improve the building. Um, I still don't care for the uh, protruding plinth. It looks to me like the first floor and the second floor are unresolved. They're not coordinated. Well, I, I just will mention that it took a little bit of doing. I know one of the things that you wanted to see, which was something that technically is out of the jurisdiction, but it was, it was a significant give back was to re retain those uh, walls that will become interior, but are now <laughs> will become interior. And I, I thought I was really, really trying to, to and if, just to give you what you saw, some of the soul of this uh, 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 structure uh, retaining. So I just, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, but I thought that was uh, 
Maybe asking for a wee bit, a wee bit of give and take from you. That's all, Peter. I don't know how to be other than other than direct on that. Sure. Okay, Sarah. Um, um, I I don't think we can unless until we see actual. Don't we need to see sections and moldings and things like that? I mean, we have we have a um, theoretical design, but I, do we really have enough information on the elevations? Uh huh. Uh -huh. I've never seen molding drawings. Uh, well, at mean, least sections, so you have- Obviously, yeah. Yeah, 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 Yes, construction. John, I mean, John, we have on historic buildings. Um, well, that's true. Yeah, I just, usually when you show, well, anyway, I'm sorry, I apologize. So, Sarah, you're, your concern is one of the details? One of the details. I still think it's too chunky. I don't think it's subservient, but that's just, I mean, I, rather than, than have me pre-vote, you, you know my sentiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm just one vote. What, have what details are you, are you looking for? The, uh, the, details well, the, I mean, the details at the entry? Yeah, I think I think that the idea of um, do you, do you have the sections and act, and actually the um, dimensions of the rectangle re rectangular section that we're re uh, reproducing? I, I don't. I, I mean, honestly, we've been modifying it, so we haven't taken it to that to that extreme. I, obviously, our goal is to recreate this photo, mm -hmm. so that would be. You know that would this is this is what we're attempting to recreate. I, I I don't have drawings per se to show that. I we just that was our goal was to recreate this photo here. So I have a question to you, Lisa. Um, on your exterior west drawing, drawing four, The, the roof pitch that we're talking about over the, so it is a flat roof. You just have a slight pitch that goes backwards toward the back of the extension over about the back 40% of it, right? Yeah, we, I can, I can show that a little bit lower if, if that, it, it's, it can be shown a little bit lower at, to make sure that it, it shows that it's in line with the corbel. I can't, is that right? off my head. Yeah, I think we would want to see that that to make sure that we're all understanding the exact height of this versus, versus the original historic building. Okay, if we came back with that ad additional detail and for Sarah some molding details. I don't think you need is it. I mean, my I question would be, I'm trying to also close out the ZBA. Is it possible? Well, let's not worry about that. Lisa, let's not worry about that. Well, That's I'm just trying to see if we can close it. I'm just trying to see if we can close it so that I know that I have that I know what I'm going back to them for. Well, and it's such a de minimis application. Please, it's hey, such John, a de minimis the, application. The direction you were headed, the, John, the direction you were headed somehow made it makes sense to me. If if we can uh, show the drawings where that is subservient to the, the corbels, and if we can provide additional details around some of those elements that we've just added since the last meeting. I, I mean, the question now is if, if we agree on the, the design, the design it, it itself. Uh, I mean, th we can, thank you, John. I mean, that, that's really the, the, what I see as being the issue. And, and I, I agree with Sarah, but if there was, this were just any other house, it might not be an issue, but this is a, you know, a contributing uh, structure and historic in nature. And I think for that reason, and a landmark. It's worth having those additional, uh, those additional drawings. And a national landmark. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't disagree. I, I was offering. That's why I was offering to show the the, the 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 detail on the pitch, and as Sarah requested, the the molding details. That should be part of your approval package, hopefully. Okay. All right. And, and, so, and uh, I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned about the zoning board of appeals. It's such a. It's like a. It's probably the smallest variance that they've heard in 50 years. It's tiny. It's four square feet. You're saying size doesn't matter. Uh, no, I don't think it does. <laughs> so, so, I think so, it's so, Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, no. 
Um, and, and, and I just, can I just confirm that the board the board is only interested in the corbels on the on the addition, not I mean on the on the entry, not on the uh, not on the um, uh, addition. Correct? No, the addition. That's where that's you where want, I, you want the corbels on on this addition as well. Yeah, the top of the roof should be at the bottom of the corbel. Oh yeah, no, no, that that yes, but but not um, you no, not no, okay. not the no. detail of no no. Okay, all right, all right. I just want to make sure you just want it to look like you want it to look like this, but the corbeling the, those little those little lintels there will will only be on the the. That's right. Uh, yes. Right. We, we want the, the the drawings to be work to to be evident that that is at the same level as the corbels, right? Right. 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 But, but I want to make sure that if Sarah wants certain molding details that we're going to we're going to provide them for her though is that Sarah is there any other area where you wanted that no I believe that that the most important is because you you say you're replicating that um early postcard we, we should see what the molding profiles look like okay good we'll get it done all right so I will take that as a request for an adjournment um and unless there are other comments, uh, I will move that we accept the applicant's request to adjourn our next meeting. Uh, do I second on that? Okay, if you second by John, all in favor, aye. Aye. Uh -huh. John, it looks like you were, John Bennett, you were about to say something that would top my off color comment. Well, I was just assuming, given your comment, I assume you're going to drink a, a, a magnum bottle of champagne on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, those those days are long gone. Oh, I'll be anyway. in bed by nine. <laughs> oh. Okay. Happy New Year. Happy all New right. Year. All right. Same to both of you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank uh, you. All right. Thanks. See you. Uh, next application is that of Twenty Seven Gin Lane uh, at Twenty Seven Gin Lane to construct an addition. Uh, so, who might be appearing before us for that? Christopher DeSono. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get my stuff in order here. <clears throat> yep. What about Searsucker? Uh, Searsucker will come up after this. Oh, okay. And I have a quick question, Alice. Did, did, did they do all the adjournments? I mean, I know he mentioned it, but were they all told that they're adjourned? Okay. Uh, well, we, what? Uh, so let's, let's <laughs> do that. We did, but let's do that again. If they, in case there's any body either from those applicants or the public sticking around there was mm -hmm. uh, we were adjourning number two on the agenda which is beachwood latch number three bhnh which is 109 hampton road um post crossing llc which has been a continuation of an adjournment fair lane realty corp um it's a continuation of an adjournment um then in the non-historic the Heart of Hamptons, uh, that's a continuing adjournment. Um, 31 Roscoe Developer is a new adjournment. Mar now that's where I have a question. Uh, that, that was adjourned, that was adjourned, sorry, from last time. For it, that, that has been adjourned how many times now over the past you know, several months? Well, we adjourned Here it the last the time. time. And, and oh. because this was a an unscheduled meeting, we're not, anybody was moved forward without prejudice. Is that Got it? Okay. Yeah. So uh, Margaret Lewis at 63 Dale Street uh, has been adjourned to January. Uh, Robert Roberts at 75 Hetty Creek has been adjourned to January. And Kavara Ansari uh, at 306 Hill Street has been adjourned to January as well. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So that puts us at 27 Gin Lane. And so I see somebody there who's stepping up. So Jeff, did you get my message about John Grew? He wanted to know who adjourned him. Uh, one, I don't know, Jackie. Uh, <laughs> that, oh, I'm sorry, Alice. I think I, that was, that was either a message from you or it was in the minutes from the last meeting. They put that on for January 10th. They did not ask oh, okay. me on for this meeting. That's right. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. That was the case with a lot of the applications. 
That is right. That's right. Uh, and that's because this is a special meeting. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay, just make it clear I, to them. If they're right. Listening. Well, and it, and it's in the minutes of the last meeting that um, uh, motion to adjourn uh, to January tenth. So that was a okay. request and agreement. Perfect. Thank you for okay. the clarification. Yep. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Thank you. Uh, and so now let me get that twenty-seven June. Let me take this. Oh, here. Okay. So let us know, Christopher, who you are. Good evening. I'm Christopher Desuno. I'm the architect for the applicant. Okay. Um, my office in Tag Harbor. Okay. And I just want to do one thing here. I want to make sure that we are all set. Hi, so, Chris. How you doing, Alice? It's been a while. Nice to see you. I know. You too. So I think this was, I think in my minutes, this was a new case as of last week. We had affidavits, but you voluntarily adjourned. Okay. So Exactly. So Christopher, take us through your presentation, your elevations. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is a, uh, let me see here. This is a, oh, it's, you've got the screen. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's probably one of the smaller applications you've ever seen. Um, the, this portion of the house, which is behind the garage is um, the uh, staff quarters. There is a living room, bathroom and bedroom. And the whole extension is this small piece on either side of the two lower um, elevations there on the west and the east. You, oops. Go ahead. I, I was. I'll get okay. That. So on. Uh, we're bumping out um, a few feet to enlarge both the rooms on the inside. Um, it steps in from the corners on either side. Um, so it's 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 narrower than the existing building, I don't, I don't and see uh, I don't yeah, see no, that's a oh, cat. Oh. Yeah, hang on a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, have you ever hit a button that did something crazy? <laughs> Here, let me yeah. stop my share. Yeah. Woo, that was crazy. <laughs> the eject button. I don't know what it was. Hold on a second. <laughs> Don't hit them. Bye. <laughs> my, my, my. There we go. Whew. There's the site plan. Okay. And I'll put the oh, that's, that's Ball Castle. Okay. That's, yeah, that's not us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one, Herrick. No, not Herrick. Oh, no, that's. Yeah. It's uh, 27 Gin Lane. Okay, I know. The final site plan. That's that one. That's not us, yeah. Yeah. That's wrong. That's you had us. I, 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 that's what I get for trying to be proactive here. I'm going to go back to the start here and get rid of this. Too many pictures on my desktop. All right, final plans for, oh, that's why. Gin Lane, right? That's yeah. correct. Okay, I got it. Do, 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 Gin Lane. This you, yes. That's it. Oh my, okay. Okay, so, um... The portion that we're adding on is um, if you're looking at the north exterior elevation, the it's you can see from the inner corner board to the upper railing and back down to that inner quarter board. It's a uh, 21 foot 11 inches wide, 22 feet wide. Um, it's a couple of feet narrower than the actual building, um, yeah. and it's six feet deep, which is you look down at the east and the west elevations, it's that portion. You see the, the phantom dash dot line. There's an arrow. It says 
addition and existing. So it's that six feet that we're adding onto the building. Okay. Was that the terrace is six feet wide? That's right. It's just a Juliet balcony. Oh, I think I love you. Yes. That, that, <laughs> that's for us to see a terrace. It's not 3,000 square feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it looks great. It is great. Thanks. Uh, it's, we're just matching existing details, matching the existing windows. Um, it's, it is what it is. Good to me too. I approve it. I think it looks great. Thank you. <clears throat> and okay. you've, got the, you've got details. Lord love you. <laughs> okay. Any uh, any public comment? Okay. Let's see. I do not see any hands up, Jeff. Okay, so uh, given the positive uh, comments from the board, I would move that we submit this to written decision with the intent to approve. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Okay, second by Peter. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Okay, great. Okay, good. Thank you, gentlemen and lady. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Bye, so, as okay, uh, so as was noted by uh, someone. Um, Searsucker, we mentioned Smithtown Partners, that's adjourned to January. Then Searsucker LLC, which um, on the website agenda is on uh, non-historic, but it is, is an historic um, property. So uh, please, whoever is representing Searsucker, Searsucker LLC, uh, three, 385 South Main Street, please step up. Okay, you have three people coming in. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes. For Ferguson so, Architects. Representative now, hi. Now I don't know um, if we have digital submissions on this. At least. Um, I did not have any from the building department. I, I don't know if you folks did or Jackie or- We had, we had them from the previous- uh, I, I have meeting. 40 metal lane. Okay, now, all right. So maybe that's in, it was in the previous- uh, Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, there, right? there was no change, Jeff. Okay. The conversation is a landscape conversation. Oh, that's right, that's right. Th th thank you very much. Okay. It's a conversation about trees. Um, okay, no, then if this, right. This, this is, is not our property cat. We're happy to share our screen if needed. Yeah. Yes. It's what are we, we're not on 40? We're on mm -hmm. 385 South Main. Okay. <clears throat> and I do not see it. So, I'm all right. So, here's gentlemen, our plan. gentlemen, again, just for, for Jackie's sake, uh, please introduce yourselves. Uh, yes, hi. I'm Stephen Chrisman with Ferguson Shimami and Architects representing the applicant. And I'm here tonight with Connor Moran from our office and Peter Gui, uh, uh, Perry Guillaume, the landscape architect. Uh, right. And the last meeting on the 13th, there was a question about the trees. And on December 17th, there was a site visit uh, that was attended by uh, Sarah and John to visit the site with Perry. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're, we're here to answer any further questions about the project. Okay, so Sarah and John, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, John and I met, and we we they were very was very helpful, indicating which the reasoning for the removal of trees. That was that what I one of the main things that I was interested in. Um, and at during the field trip, for want of a better expression, um, it was decided that a pine that is located uh, i have a photograph of it but i can't show it because i'm not uh on the video part but there was a, a pine tree that was uh look 
facing the southernmost um, border of the property, and it was the it was on site agreement that every effort would be made to retain that pine tree, and that was one that was literally halfway down the um, the sight line, and there, and um, Perry the agreed. The corner of the, the property, more uh, toward the um, uh, Gin Lane property boundary. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that looks. If it's the tree I'm thinking of, it's it's still indicated as being removed. It's that. It's, isn't that large red circle to the? Um, I, I think it's here. Perry. Are you here? You could point out the tree and make sure we're all seeing the exact tree. Sure, <clears throat> Perry Gio. Uh, can you see my pointer on the tree? No. No. No, Connor, can you I see okay. a spruce tree? No, to the right, that tree. It's a spruce tree, uh, Sarah and John. Um, yeah. We will keep that tree. Great. This is the plan that was presented and uh, last time. It hasn't been updated, but that would be the exception. Yeah, I right. think we agree that with some some maintenance and trimming, that could, tree could be, uh, you know. It's out of harm's way. It's very old age. Sarah pointed out it probably belonged to the house that was on the pond at the time when it was planted, you know, when it was a more expansive property. And it's not in harm's way. The new construction or grading uh, will keep it. Thank you. That was the only one that was in question. Everything else uh, uh, on the plan looked fine to both Sarah yeah. and I. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let me, anyway, any thank you. Any there, public comment? Uh, before that, what, was there, wasn't, okay. there a question, was, wasn't there a question about keeping the existing gates and posts? They are, they, they are being kept and restored. Okay. The, the, the gates are new, but the posts are restored, correct? Exactly. Correct, that's, the brick that's, pillars. That's right. right. Yeah, the, the the pillars mm -hmm. are in, one yeah, of them is in. And we looked at that, it looked nice. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like, well, first of all, any public comment? I don't see any, Jeff. Okay, so it sounds like we're in agreement with the plan that has to have that tree to be saved marked as such. Mm -hmm. Alex, do you have enough, I mean, there's really, whole heck of a lot here but do you have enough to write a written decision and then um you know by the time you're done with that the guys will be able to submit their plan and then sarah and john can validate that it's uh or verify that that it's accurate exactly i was going to suggest that we make the written decisions subject to a revised landscaping plan and probably by the time we adopt it we'll have that plan submitted and verified okay Great. Okay, so uh, I move that we uh, accept what Alice said. No, so I, I move <laughs> the, uh, um, that we move to written decision the application of Sears Secker uh, to LLC 35, 385 South Main Street um, with the landscaping plan as uh, sub subject to verification by uh, the board. Okay, uh, all second on that. John Gregory seconds, all in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, it's unanimous. Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Great, thank you very much. Okay, great. Okay. So that concludes the historic applications. But what about 40 Meadow Lane, no? It's not 40 Meadow Lane. Uh, they, I thought they, I thought they adjourned to January. Wrong. Yeah, they're adjourned to the tenth. I believe that one was in the last minutes as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Smith Town Partners. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, public hearing is non-historic. We went through the first three adjournments. Uh, so. Uh, the first one that is active for tonight is that of John Brown at 94 Pelletro. <clears throat> okay. BJ, I see you there. Is it just? Um, 
me start my video. There we go. Okay. Good evening, board members. DJ Steinbrecher, architect for the applicant, John Brown. Next to me here, um, we had a few uh, a few tweaks to the plans um, and the elevations from our prior meeting, and then also uh, we had done a site visit regarding the landscaping and the trees. Um, that we'll go over also. Okay. So, so now, um, Chad has. Chad has the plans. Okay. Now you just direct her to what page you want to view. Well, should we start? Should we start with the landscaping, or do you want to do the house first? Let's, let's, let's do the house first. Okay. All right. So it would be the other PDF that you have, Chad. Well, I have this one, the elevation. Everything's in pieces on this one. Oh, that's a simple. Uh, that's not the right PDF. Okay. That's an old one. Uh, do you have one that's dated? Hang on one second. 12 21 21. I have 12 7 10 yeah. 19. There's a December 23rd submission date. Funny, I don't yeah. have that. I have the seventh, the nineteenth. What Jeff? Well, let me let me see what I sent you. Kat. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see, what did I send to you? Uh, created by... site plan and elevations. This one I have, and uh... yeah, I did resend it earlier to today to you also, Kat. You sent it to me. Yes. Okay. I'll go to my email. Yeah, it has a 12, 12, 21, 21 date on it. Okay. Well done. 94 Pono Street renderings. Uh, I might have missed sending them to you. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. I, I'm going to just pull this right here. Preview. This must be. Come on. Oh, it's the same shot, same shot I just put up. Can the applicant share? I yeah. can. Yeah, okay, go ahead. We'll, we all have a... Uh... Share my screen? Yep. Please. Okay, yeah. hang on one yeah, second. Go ahead. <clears throat> oh, let's see now. The plan I have has your date of 12-20-21 and received by the building department on 1223. That's the one I have. Okay. Gotcha. Me too. How does right. this look, Jeff? Good? Uh, yes. When you go to the elevation, then I'll know. Go to page six. Okay. That's and my page six. Zoom in, on, zoom in on the bottom so you can see the date. Okay. Twelve twenty. That's it. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're good. Twelve twenty. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me just back up. Um, maybe I can just go to that that page six. We'll start there because the elevations we had changed. Um, we widened the front door from 36 inches to 42 inches. And then the window above that was uh, previously a picture window. And we matched that um, three foot wide double hung window as we have on the second floor elevations. And then the other change that we did to the elevations, the front and rear, well, the right side is we hip that roof. So we now have the hip roof with the gable running through the front and the back on the right side. And I'll just scroll down so you can see the south elevation. I also have some renderings that I did, um, you know, updated renderings. I don't know if you got those, but I could also share those if you'd like. Yes, please. So that's the south elevation with the hip roof here and the side matching. And it's all, all the pictures are matching that 
Gable. Uh, that's the east elevation. And here's the west elevation, which from the last meeting, this, this hip was a gable on that previous meeting that we did. Um, those, those are the changes that I have. So let me, I'll bring up the, my, my renderings. So here's the front looking straight on, let me see back a little bit. I get the whole picture. So yeah, we widened the front door. We, we changed the window above. And you can't see the hip from here on the right side, but let me go to the next photo that shows that hip roof here. And then I also have, which board has not seen, but I did do some renderings of the rear and the sides. So that's the rear elevation from the, uh, from the southeast. And this is the rear elevation from the southwest. Looks see good. The see the hip? Yes, and here's the hip that was changed from the gable to the hip. Well, that was that was the changes on the house itself that we made. Can you show the front the front elevation again, please? Sure. Uh, you want this one, or should I do the side? This, this one's fine. Okay. Was that uh, the the front door looks narrower in this rendering than it does in the drawing? Oh no. Um, oh, That's I think you're right. I might oh, not have. Yeah. Oh no, I think I did not change that. Okay. Okay. That's, correct. That's, what that, that's supposed to be six inches wider. Um, we can okay. see that. Yeah, you're, you're, you're correct. That does look like it's still three feet. Oh, okay. darn. I can see okay. the in the other one. That was good. <laughs> you picked that up. Wow. And what color is the, uh, that, the metal roofing that's over the entryway? Bronze. What's that? It's a bronze. bronze. John's going to do. And is that standing seam? Yes. yes. And the color of the house is beige, gray. It's it's a um it's called seacoast gray by um, Maybach. It's a pre-stained, like a dove gray kind of shingle. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We have we do have. I have a sample. You want me? Yeah, yeah we do have. Honestly, I think you've done a lot of great work addressing a lot of our questions. My only comment was, I think that that standing seam roof might be a little more successful in a gray, in a gray tone versus a brown. With a little bit lighter the, tone. The brown seems to be very heavy and it seems to come out of nowhere against the other yeah. tone, the other yeah. tonality of what is becoming a beautiful house. Yeah. Well, thank you. A lead, yeah. a lead color. Yeah. Lead, yeah, lead. Like a, dark, like a dark lead color would be good. Not dark. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just there's, there's a, if that's galvaloon, there's a medium galvaloon gray tone that looks like aged lead copper. Lead, okay. Lead, lead, it looks great. Lead I, color, I, copper I, color, yeah. 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 So I, I, I'll tell you what, guys. Um, can you mark on your plans that you submit to the building department uh, the color of the materials? Uh, you know, specify, unless it's on here, but I don't see it right away, but uh, the, the color of the siding that you just mentioned. Okay. Yeah, I think, and, John, did you submit that? With the uh, specifications on the colors and you did a, you did a while back. Yeah, so, so why we'll, we'll, we'll just double, we'll double check on that and make sure it's up to no, date. No, you put them in the building department. Yeah. On the notes. Is that right? Yeah, I'm, I know you did originally. Yeah, I, I need my glasses to see it, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll make sure that that's all in line. Okay, yeah, and so we'll, uh, I don't want to hold you guys up at this point, having gone through it as much as you have, uh, but we'll be looking for a gray to dark gray or 
Well, Black you color. Gray. Mark, you mentioned the color tone on the uh, standing seam. Yeah. Lead, it's a, it's lead group? color. The yeah, group lead. Is or asphalt, just out of. Right. Okay. All right. Now I'll I'll actually change. You know, I'll make sure I note that I'm, I'll submit some new plans and um, I'll make some copies of these. these that will go on the construction drawings. These renderings also. Yeah. And, and what's the? Uh, I guess. And I heard somebody mention uh, uh, perhaps using asphalt instead of a metal roof. Is there any consideration to that? Um. Well, the house, well, we're the doing. We're gonna. Room. We're gonna use a. We're gonna do a wood roof. So, if, well, well, why would if you, that were the case, then I think the st I think the lead standing seam would look fine there. I think the it's a nice detail, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah it, it'd be a nice detail. I, I see what you're saying. If it was just toned down a little bit. Yeah. My yeah. question was the uh, Jeff was was the roof whether it was asphalt or, or cedar. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. yeah. The, the, yeah. The main roof is cedar. Right. Perfect. Thank cedar. You. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, um, any other comments about it? It sounds like we're okay on the, the house. Okay, incredible transformation from where we started. Yeah. Thank you, thank good, you for good, your help. Good, good <laughs> stuff guys, well thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, All right. Let's move on to the landscape and then we'll see if there's any public comment. Okay, um, so, so, Regarding the landscaping at our site meeting, let me actually pull. Do you want me to pull up my? Yeah, because I don't think I have a new submission on that. I, I have yeah. the, the landscape plan I have is just dated December 9th. And so. Oh, that's a new one. Yeah, this one is dated, let's see. Uh, Oh, it says 12 8, but I believe this is this is they just sent us this the other day after um after we did the site meeting. And you know what all the um so but they I know that they were going to, I don't know if they actually revised the plan. They were gonna revise the plan and, and resubmit that because both of them were away for the holidays. No, the, the this is but he he emailed us a list of um of what will be removing and pruning and that sort so, of thing. So I, it, if, if you don't have that for us to review, and if it's okay with Alice, maybe we can bifurcate the um, the approval, Alice, and approve the, uh, the, the oh, yeah. so that they can go ahead with their whatever ordering they have to do, and then we'll, we'll separate out the landscape. Is that possible? Uh, I don't have a problem with that in this instance. Yeah, let, let, let's let's do that, guys. Uh, okay. Let me ask if there's any public comment. Okay. Yes, there is one. John okay. Liu. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Hi, John. Again, just introduce yourself, although we, we've seen Hi, you. Uh, this, this is John Liu. I'm uh, the owner of the property next door, 96 Dollar Tro. Uh, nice to mm -hmm. see everyone. Happy holidays. Uh, I, I just uh, have a, a couple of questions. Uh, I guess one is, is uh, I guess the first is the uh, one of the uh, the board ladies have mentioned on more than one occasions a concern about the size of the, the scale of the, the house. So where did where did that come out? I mean, I, I didn't hear that in, in this discussion. Right. The, also, uh, okay, we, we raised. I'm sorry, go ahead. Because that's also a concern I've raised a couple of times on, on two previous meetings. Oh, you said there was a second concern. So you said there was another concern? No. Oh, the other concern. Well, it's just how, because uh, I guess the landscape, how-, how Landscaping, right. Yeah, so the landscaping discussion, let's defer that until they come back with the landscaping plan that both, uh, that you and the fellow, my fellow board members can look at. But what I can assure you, John, is that Sarah and I did walk the property. Uh, I can also share with you uh, the property owner's sincere intent to save as much uh, the viable trees as possible and to provide as much privacy as is appropriate. Uh, so let's, 
let's hold off on that discussion uh, until they come back uh, on the 10th with the landscaping plan. Um, in terms of size, well, this board really doesn't have purview over size in the sense of dimensions. Uh, what it does have purview over is uh, what most people would call, think of as size, but it has to do with scale and, and mass. Uh, so they are building well within the size envelope that's allowed in terms of square footage, height, uh, pyramid law, and so on. Then the question is scaling and appropriateness and harmony with the neighborhood. Uh, what we've done over the last um, number of sessions, uh, and to a large extent, not only based on our view of this house in the context of the neighborhood, but also listening to, to you uh, and your comments. Um, and we've worked with BJ and, and John to reduce the, the scaling and the mass, which we do have purview over. Um, and you know, we can't dictate the actual size of the house, um, but in terms of the harm scale and harmony with the uh, the neighborhood, that's what we have. Uh, we have purview over. So the consensus is that yes, might we like to see a uh, smaller house? Have we seen smaller houses built on comparable properties? Yes. Is it um, out of harmony to such an extent that the board would would or should um, disapprove the application. Uh, the sentiment of the board is that it doesn't rise to, to, to that level. Um, and, and may I ask, how does the board define uh, harmony? When you've mentioned you have purview over, over appropriateness and harmony, how, how is that defined? Yeah, um, well, the board is authorized, if you will, or is uh, charged with using its judgment. Uh, so definitions are, uh, I wouldn't say ambiguous, but they are subject to judgment. Uh, so this is a neighborhood, and I, and I shared some of this with John and BJ when we were at the property. Uh, this is a neighborhood that is um, at one time had very modest village houses. Uh, now it has, over the last 20 years, uh, a number of larger houses, uh, in fact, houses that under the current code could not be built. So, uh, and I don't, John, I don't know how long you've been in the village and not that that matters. I only reference that from the standpoint that the village code has changed over the last 20 years, um, such that, uh, houses that were built 20 years ago that might fall under the category of McMansions can't be built on small properties at this point. Are there still houses that may seem to one person or another uh, large or excessive? Yes, that, that's the case. Um, I, I think- well, I mean, I mean my, my def sorry to interrupt, my, my, my definition sure. of harm is how it coexists with others around it, right? I mean, I think that's, a, if we're mm -hmm. gonna be subjective, that's a fair, yeah way to define it. I mean, if you, I don't know if you saw my house, which is about 1,100 square feet. The one that's next to a Cor Coralie's house is 900 square feet. So I don't know. And, and then the house that was at 94 Pelletro before was maybe 800 square feet. And, and these three houses coexisted in harmony. I, I don't see how this house at its scale is now going to be defined as, as as in harmony, unless what it was the last 20 years was out of harmony and this is bringing it into harmony. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that needs to be addressed. And then the other question is, I mean, I've been, this is my third meeting uh, and I've listened to the discussions around the architecture of the house. I, I don't know, maybe I missed something, but I don't think the scale has been reduced in the three meetings. I mean, there's been talk about, you know, coloring about, some, you know, shapes, but I don't believe in these three meetings, the scale and the mass of that the house has been reduced, ha has it? I mean- Well, I, I, can well, I say something? Sure, sure, um, sure Peter, In thank fact, you. you know, they, they had gables, uh, two gables, which, you know, reached up to a height of 30 some feet and 
they got rid of them and now that we have eave lines at a height of 22 feet if that's not scaling it back i don't know what is yeah, we found that the, we, we found that the um windows originally were uh kind of erratic and weren't oh conforming to what the examples that are in the design guidelines and i think we uh voiced that and the applicant responded um he changed window sizes he changed window configurations i, I think they've been responsive and um i would just say too you know uh the, the, what you're saying is, is is a sentiment that's been going on for 20 years in the village and, and the village has worked assiduously to reduce the zoning envelope just to address these concerns but the fact remains someone buying a new house in southampton village does not want to build a thousand square foot house. And I'm afraid your house and the neighbors are the ones that are rapidly going to be out of character. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. I just wanted to say one thing. We also reduce the overall height for you right. along with yeah. everything. Else. No, they, they yeah. actually, they, they, they raised the, they lowered the foundation of foot, which is a huge impact. You know, yeah. one of the, one of the so things, I guess the uh, four took about fifteen percent out of the total roofing on that. <laughs> so, so I think we did so our job, okay? Okay, John. I think we did our job. I'm sorry. Can I can I speak? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I think I we did it. our job. I think yeah. we did the board did our job. Right. So so let's. Can I, uh, Mr. Chairman? Can I speak? Say something. Uh, yes, but I, I don't want to get into an argument about things that we can't address. No, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with nobody else. Right, but by the code, um, because the codes um, charges this board with um, promoting the general welfare, uh, including responsible development. And that takes place over time. So har harmony is an evolving um, thing and, um, we can't necessarily, as Peter was saying, expect everybody coming into a neighborhood at, at this point to want to build a thousand or fifteen hundred or even a two thousand square foot house. Um, now there are some communities, and John, I'd be happy to work with you or to introduce you to the folks who are developing the master plan. There are some communities that do, in fact, define what's uh, relative scale. Um, some communities have, you can build a house that's no larger than 120% of the house on either side or something like that. We don't have that. So there are things in our code that could be changed. There's a master plan and group that's working on that. Uh, and it's my uh, sorry, sorry, I mean, I, I've listened to not just this meeting, but the other mm -hmm. meeting, just so I can understand how the board works. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard things that is about harmony that that's a lot less than what we're talking about. I mean, I, I there's one case where there's a board member talking about walking the beach and seeing mm -hmm. uh, the, the, how high the bluff is and, and whether that's an, so. I mean, I think. For one, there needs to be, I believe there should be a definition of how the board defines harmony. Otherwise, how do you do your work? Otherwise, it's just. This, this is really, this discussion is beyond this project yeah. and, and our purview. Can, I, you have to address the trustees, the mayor, people who write the laws. We don't do that. We're, we're, right. we're well, enacting them. And, and, so, and, and the, 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 the cri criteria is, uh, does include scale and mass. Uh, design materials and the like, uh, and it's a dynamic. Um, There's no scale in this section. We have scale and historic. In we historic don't have scale and non-historic. Scale this one. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So that no scale. Thanks, Dallas. So so what? Just mass or and, and how's how's that defined? Mass? You, you know, this is not the time for this discussion, yeah. John. Yeah. So, well, here, the board is charged with the duty of exercising sound judgment and, and rejecting plans, which in its opinion are not of harmonious character because of proposed style, materials, mass, line, color, detail, or placement upon the property or in relation to the spaces between the buildings and natural character of the landscape. So Alice is right. It doesn't include scale. It doesn't include mass. Um, and it's a matter of exercising sound judgment. And at the end of the day, 
Uh, we have a board of five folks. We don't always agree on this one. We believe that the applicant has made significant changes in terms of the design, the materials, and the look of the house to effectively reduce uh, the apparent massing, which is a visual um, uh, so, so may, I, may, I, may I just ask, there's one more lady that has on um, two previous occasions, she's not on the call today. She has- She, she, she is. She's here. I'm, she I'm here. I'm here and I am just one vote. And, okay. uh, and if you follow the if you follow the conversation, uh, zoning trumps most of of these things. There there is as of right, this applicant could have built bigger. So what what we've done is is to try to mitigate the roof, the height, and they've been compliant. Uh, and at this point, that's about as as the best we can do. And also the material the, ma the materials are harmonious with the architectural language of the village. So, so, so Matt, just, just from a procedure standpoint, if, if the board now approves to the house, then mm -hmm. what is the, the next step if, if we so, disagree? Uh, right. So uh, we will vote tonight to a approve the, uh, the house. Uh, we're going to hold off on the landscaping plan. Uh, if, if you believe that the board has acted uh, contrary to its charge, then you can file what's called an Article 78, which is basically a lawsuit um, uh, in regard to this particular application. Um, so, and you're welcome to do that. Um, I would check with your counsel to see if in fact, and have them review the tapes and see if in fact we have acted properly or, or not. I believe we have. Um, but, you know, again, that's your choice. So uh, tonight, what I'd like to do, uh, having heard from the board, the public and the applicant is to uh, make a motion that we approve the uh, structure and the structure only uh, for the applicant of John Brown at 94 Pilatro Street. Um, so do I have a second on that? Second. Second by Peter, all in favor. And let's Aye. do voice. Uh, Aye. Aye. Aye by John, I by Peter, I by Mark, uh, I by me, Sarah, your call. Nay. Nay. Nay, nay by Sarah. So it's a four to one vote. So the structure, <coughs> and we will adjourn to our next meeting um, for the, the applicant to complete the file to include a landscape plan. So uh, we'll see uh, everybody again on the 10th. Uh, and John. John Liu, I'm well happy to have discussions with, with you offline uh, as well, okay? Not, not about this application, but about um, zoning in, in general, okay? Alrighty, uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. What do you have to do on this application? No, okay, great. Let's proceed to the next. Thank you. Okay, happy New Year, and we'll see you next time. Great, Great thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Good job. All right. Uh, it, well, it's, it's a job. And good, good job on your end, gentlemen. We appreciate the time you've spent. Okay. Uh, Robert Roberts is adjourned. Uh, so next application to be heard is that of Alice Maria uh, Grimarin at 82 Prospect Street. Okay. Alma Grimarin's coming in. That's And hello. Hi, yeah. Alma. I am here. No. Let me ask you to start your video if you didn't. Oh, find there we it. are. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm the only one presenting tonight because um, one of um, Perry, he had, you know, um, he he's flying right now back to New York. But anyway, I wanted to thank the board and especially wanted to thank Peter because he he did make a very good recommendation. At the time, I had asked for the railing to be over the uh, sunroom. I don't know if anybody can share my plans. Oh. And we have removed the railing. And Peter, you're absolutely right. The house looks so much better. 
So that was a really great recommendation. So we have um, changed the railing and taken it away. We have taken away the transom windows. Um, it's a little bit lower. Can I maneuver this or here we go. Perfect. Uh, One, so here you can see the before and the after. This is on the east side of the house. And we have taken away the transom windows. We took away the railing. And um, those were the changes that we made as per the request of our last meeting. I don't know if we can, can I do this or? Oh yeah, here we go. Here you can see it from the side. This was the old sunroom. This is the new sunroom. The uh, roof is the existing roof of the old sunroom. We just made it a little bit bigger to the left and we added the fireplace. Uh oh, what happened here? Did I do that? Probably. Uh, who, who's uh, driving the bus? Is that cat? That, there we go. So here Sorry. you can see the old uh, sunroom from the west side of the house. Now here is the sunroom, uh, the new sunroom on the west side of their house with the fireplace, brick fireplace in the center. Here was a, a window. It's been replaced by a side entrance. Everything else stayed the same. And I think the house looks amazing. So personally, I was really pleased with it. This is an interior view inside the sunroom. These are the existing windows to the kitchen, uh, doors into the house. And then this is the inside, yeah. Obviously it's gonna be keeping the cedar siding and the cedar roof. This is the original front of the house. The front of the house is staying exactly the same, except for the addition right here of the sunroom and the fireplace. And we're obviously replacing the roof with a new roof and new copper gutters, but those are all details. Is the siding, um, what, vertical boards? On the sunroom. Yeah, okay. But not the rest of the house is the right. cedar shingles. So I really appreciate actually the, the, this, the last meeting because I do think that the house became better looking. I always had this idea of having a little white railing, but you were absolutely right. It was a little bit out of character. I think it looks fine. I think it, it, the, the, the new section looks more like the, addition, or the original structure with the, the design and the, with the windows. Exactly. I think it looks fine. I think it looks fine. I just have one suggestion. <clears throat> My suggestion would be when you build that fireplace, you might want to take it a little higher because if on a windy day, your smoke is going straight into the windows. Okay, but it's not going to be wood burning. It's just going to be a... Oh, okay, it's not a wood burning fireplace? No, no, it's just going to be a gas fireplace okay. with, uh, okay. and that's decorative. Okay. I think it looks great. And I think, I, I think it now is in better harmony with the house and losing the railing was the right suggestion. It was fantastic. Okay, great. Um, so, um, any public comment? Nope. Okay. Uh, so then, it sounds like the board is all in favor, or at least majority is. So I would move that we accept the application of uh, Alma or Alice Maria Gimmerin. Uh, at 82 Prospect Street to construct an addition. Uh, do I have a second on that by John Gregory? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sarah, Aye. we see your hand. Okay. Uh, we hear your voice. It's unanimous. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. All right. Thank you uh, for. And the next step is we'll hear from Alice or.
Uh, well, in this case, it's non historic. So I will be going to the building department tomorrow to sign the folders. Uh, okay. And then, uh, then it's Jackie and Derek will be issuing the, the building permit. And I imagine that would take a few days. Okay, but, great. Yeah, it's all submitted. So thank you very much. All right, Jackie, am I wrong on that information I gave Elmer? Uh, a few weeks. But no, a few days. But two days. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Your lips to God's ears, but <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. So I'll much. let you know no, what they, I know. <laughs> Alice, what, what should I be telling people? <laughs> Jackie. In a timely fashion. <laughs> okay. um, when I get you around to it. Guess it is possible. Weeks, depending on when all submittals uh, have been received to the file. So okay. I think, I think we'll touch base. I'll let you know what else is needed to get it completed. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Jackie. Great. Thank, Thank you. Andrew. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Take care. Bye bye. Can I? Right. Okay. So uh, adjourned is Kaba <coughs> Anzari. And so the next application to be heard is that of Apogee Building Company LLC at 134 Corrigan. Okay, Brian Glasser is coming in. Brian, are we going to see your face? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, we can hear you. We just just can't see you. There we go. Hi. Hello. It's good. To see you. Hi. So, Brian, introduce yourself and who you're representing, and then we'll proceed. All right. Um, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Glasser. I'm the architect representing uh, Apogee, Apogee Building uh, LLC. And we're working on the project we're uh, presenting is 134 Corrigan Street. Um, the one thing I just want to bring to the board members' attention, uh, I finally got a landscape plan and I tried sending it to Derek and Jackie. I was hoping you guys had that. If you didn't, I have it here and I can share my screen. <clears throat> but um, I did address the questions that you guys had. So I don't know, uh, Jackie, you're there? Yeah, you know what, I think that was just forwarded this morning, Jeff, to both you and Kat. Okay, and Kat, if so, it might be in the folder. Uh, that's on Dropbox. I'm, I'm looking at is something that's, that was overlaid and then everything that's here. Brian have it? He's a, I only had two in there. Um, I don't know, maybe it won't be a big deal to you guys, but um, it's something I would like to present if it's possible. Right. I can share Let my me, screen. But... Look, I'll stop sharing so you can put whatever the um, plan is up that you need to see. Oh, wonderful. It's something that we try to get, obviously, to you guys with the press package, but bringing all the team members sometimes it <laughs> happen as quick as possible um so basically um the one the one um item that you guys wanted me to address was the covered patio well the the rooftop deck on the second floor coming off of the master which is right over this this covered area here um basically and i have a section cut through showing like the view line from a person at the second story deck but basically i just want to uh, we were trying to present that we were going to end up having uh, uh, a 14 to 16 foot green giant uh, abravide going along this property line on the north side. And we were also going to be planting 14 to 16 foot tall river birch trees, two of them right here. The one thing that I wanted to also show, so this is pretty much the overall landscape that you can see, but I think the issues that you guys had before kind of pertain to this area. So that was that area. And I wanted to just share my, I wanted to share the, um, if I show the section, can you guys see the section here? 
this was in the package that I presented. Try to come up with a realistic, you know, 14 to 16 foot tall planting along the property line within our property line. A uh, gentleman roughly six feet tall overviewing the neighbor. You can kind of see this viewing angle coming through, which would kind of surpass that that actual um, neighboring property. I also put into the, just to give you perspective, if you had a accessory building setback, which would be somewhere around here and the principal building setback, which is somewhere over here. So as I mentioned, your view going all the way through is kind of surpassing anybody in a pool or, you know, outside in their backyard. Um, that was pretty much it that we spoke about. Um, I'm not sure if there's any questions or comments that you guys have. John, you were the one who brought up the issue of uh, line of sight. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 in, in my opinion, it's not just the line of sight that, that's an issue on these narrower lots. It's also mm -hmm. how, how, uh, how sounds carry. And you know, being on the, the, the ground level in your backyard is one thing. It's, it's just you know, it's the way things are. But when you're elevated 15 feet off the ground, actually more than that, considering the height of a, an average adult, mm -hmm. the, 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 the sound carries much farther and I think it's it it's an issue for, from my perspective for the neighbor to the one side, and for that reason, I I, I can't approve it with the, the balcony as is. I won't anyway. The other um, the other thing I did do because I we've had this um, item come up before was I did reduce the size of the upper balcony by two feet. I forgot to mention that. Um, I know you guys don't want large gatherings up there, so by making it smaller, it's not like they're having a party off of their master deck. Um, that was something else that I know you guys have, have brought up in the past. Uh, I don't know if that's, I mean, right now this is a vacant lot as well. So that's, that's I mean, not really, it, it, it won't be empty forever. And this, yeah. this, this universal Arborvitae is the solution to all these things is not, <laughs> it doesn't work in my opinion. I will, yeah, I will say one thing, John, the reason at one point it did have the covered porch over the um where the breakfast area is coming off the back where the table is located the issue was for my client that it was going to be blocking natural sunlight coming into the morning room so that's the reason why i ended up going off to that side um i mean that's more of a preference for this particular you know site and location just because we have the southern light southeastern light coming through we didn't want to block that well i, I know in the, in the past we've requested uh some structural type of a barrier that would potentially prevent sound from carrying uh so I, maybe that's a, a possible solution but um i, I it's it, i just I, it, it's not uh it, this is not a a lot on on an estate section of the, of the village just these are narrow village lots small and i think we should do all we can to protect uh, protect neighbors in these in these neighborhoods. I also believe that arborvitae is not is not appropriate, and to and to be using it whole whole scale throughout the village uh, when there are other materials that could be more natural. It might be bayberry, it might be holly, it might be rhododendron. It might be any number of materials that don't look like this little march of of these little green figurines all the way down the block. Uh, we've seen it creeping in on Peltru and uh, the, in the site that we visited, there were there was already Arborvitae on one side and, and it is not, um, a, a, it should not be part of the vocabulary of, of just trying to, to hide a house. In right, my that, opinion. I, I, even uh, to, that, to that point, if we want to do something that's in character with the village or the Hamptons in general, I mean, a, a privet is more in keeping with exactly. the, the, exactly. the, the landscaping exactly. out here. And it even provides, you know, transparency in the wintertime so you can actually see homes. And, and that's the issue more on the front of lots. Everyone's putting these arborvitaes around their entire lots, which creates, you know, a fortress around their homes, at least with exactly. privets in the fall, winter, it creates a different sense of airiness and transparency for neighborhoods. That's the side of point for this particular property. But I agree with Sarah that arborvitaes are, are being used for for the wrong reasons. Like, like kudzu. 
I, I agree. They're everywhere, and they're they're becoming a blight. And and they don't look so wonderful in the winter. They turn sort of yellow. And then the deer always chop off the bottom six feet. So I, I don't think it's a solution either. Okay. So Brian, the, 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 the board is generally supportive of the building design. They are not particularly supportive of the second floor deck. Um, you say your client wants that. Your client may be an individual or it may be a builder. And if it's the latter, then there's some economic decisions to be made, uh, but that's not our, uh, that's not within our purview or concern. Um, but I think with the elimination of the deck, you would probably have a positive vote from the board. Um, so it depends on how much you want to hang your hat on that. Um, uh, are there other comments on either the materials board members or the design or anything else like that? No, I think other than the terrace issue, it's a, it's a good looking house. I agree. Yeah. Like, yeah. So uh, let me ask for public comment and then we'll throw it back to you, Brian. And then perhaps you either need to go back to your client and see how strongly they are insistent on that particular element or not. Uh, any public comment, Kat? No, sir. Nobody. Okay. So, Brian. Um, can, you, I, can I bring up one item maybe that would help sure. work for everybody? I don't know. So when it comes to the noise on this, I don't think my client would be okay with it's something he brings up in the program that we need the second story deck off the master, which is kind of critical. Um, is it possible that because we're going to be um, working on the lot to the neighboring property, that when we do the neighboring property, that we address this in a sense of where it's separated. That doesn't. Doesn't fly. Uh, so, we, so, we, so we, you you own the property next door. Is that what you're saying? So you're developing both properties. We can't vote on something that could be would be. Right. You know. So you know you're you're. I'm just saying it because you guys. I mean, obviously, if I came back and there was like something right next door, like Brian, we talked about this. What are you doing? Yeah. That's. In my mind, I was thinking I could work with it. I just, for me, I know with this particular lot being a half acre and what we were trying to accomplish, I thought we were in a pretty good spot and not making the deck too big based on our other conversations. So that's why I brought it up. But. So I think I'm, I'm in agreement with my fellow board members. I think you need to go back to your client and not only now, now that you've opened the door and shared with us that you're developing the property next door, the the issue will be there as well. So, uh, oh, yeah. no, I'm definitely gonna. I mean, is so it, I, I guess, yeah, I guess maybe for me to lear learn, is it is it the location? Let's just say where a covered, let's just say the balcony were to be more towards the central location. Is it something that you guys are saying, like, we really don't want them at all, or is it just is location make a difference? No, no, uh, we each application stands on its own, yeah, uh, each design and each. Uh, the location of the balcony may stand on its own, the size. There's so many different elements that we couldn't project, nor would we. Um, and so uh, what we can address is this particular property and the, the board is not willing to approve the, uh, the application with the, the balconies presented. So, uh, if so if we didn't have a balcony, you guys would approve it, is what you're saying? Mm-hmm. I, I think so. I don't hear any negative comments to the contrary. In fact, the minutes from last meeting reflect that there was a general positive uh, view of the design. Hmm. Yeah, no, I know you guys liked it. Just... Right. Okay. I, so gonna... that's, that's, that's the good news. So uh, yeah. accent, yeah. The, accent the positive and eliminate the negative. Okay. Um, you see where I stand in this situation. So I'm trying to, trying to make everybody happy here. Yeah. So okay. um, all right, so um, you're going to be going back to your client, who's the developer on this property, uh, mm -hmm. property next door. So uh, I will uh, move that we accept your request to adjourn to our next meeting. Okay. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Second. 
Second by Mark, all in favor, aye. 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 I heard Sarah, so it's unanimous. All right, Brian, thanks. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Have a happy new year. Thanks, you too. Thanks, guys. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Brian. Okay. So the final uh, building application in non-historic is at 90 Toilsome. Uh, and not to LLC, not surprisingly, at 90 Toilsome Lane. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi, Greg. Hey, hey Greg. Hey, Greg, uh, just reintroduce you. Introduce, introduce yourself again. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Greg Tankersley. I'm with uh, McAlpin Architects in New York, and I'm representing the Mack family for the uh, property uh, for a new house at 90 Tulsum. Right. And did we get digital submissions on that, Ken? I can't. Uh, no, if, sir. If no, not, I don't, if I don't not, I can not. share them. Okay. I didn't have anything in my, my package either, unless I told them. I, I, I did not either. So that's no, I, I got something. I, I had I a, got it. Yeah, I, he, they enclosed the breezeway between the garage and the house. Yeah. I saw it yeah. somewhere. Okay. I don't know why I didn't get it, but it wasn't in mine either. So, okay, let's, let's go with what you have. And Jackie will just make sure that the dates correspond to what's in the file. Okay. There were, yes, um, there were two items I believe we discussed at the uh, previous meeting and, uh, and then there's, there's one item that's changed that wasn't discussed at the previous meeting, but I'll, I'll go over that as well uh, last. So first, um, I believe uh, it was either John or Mark, I can't remember, um, had shown some, uh, expressed some concern about the, uh, the, the, the row of windows on the back of the house. That was um, me that are right here. And uh, the board had requested that I show this, uh, this location of the house with the neighboring houses sort of surrounding it. Uh, and so this is the house with the neighboring houses surrounding it. You can see from the, the houses that are on the side because the house is U-shaped, um, the master wing and this porch wing is pretty much gonna shield any sort of light coming out of the middle because it's recessed back. So the major, uh, the major, uh, I guess, concern would be this house back here. Um, there, the the window wall right now, just to give you an idea, the window wall right now is, uh, uh, I believe, 162 feet from this section to this house, um, and also. Um, uh, and just I went out to kind of take a look at it. This is really the side of their house. So there's there's a little deck out here, but it's mostly garage and and utilities. There's not a whole lot of windows on this side of the house. So most of their entertaining area is actually back here. You can see their pool and their terrace back here. So I, I don't think any, you know, any life that's 162 feet away. Uh, plus, there's a, about a 10 foot tall privet hedge that runs back here. I don't think it's going to be any sort of major uh, major problem uh, for these people in this area right here. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, the second item uh, was, uh, I believe, and Mark, it may have been you that mentioned about the front garage. That was, yeah, that was me. That yeah. Was Mark. yeah. And, you were, and you were correct. I went back and had a discussion with the town and on this property, uh, you cannot have a, uh, a a carriage house or an out basically an outbuilding uh, forward of this house that is not uh, not physically attached by a uh, conditioned space. So what we have done uh, is is left the design exactly the way it was. So that's the carriage house. That's the little low pitch roof that connects it, and we have just glassed it in with a series of doors that are little miniature versions of the some of the doors we had on the existing house already. Uh, so that is now that is now basically a glassed in mud room, uh, kind of staging room, so that they can put all their stuff out there and and kind of come and go. And so that's one side of it, and that is the other side of it. Um, but otherwise, the the massing of the house and everything stays the same. So you still 
you still get the little front, uh, little deer carriage house out front with the connector going to it. What's the width of that connecting breezeway? I think it is, uh, it is 14, well, it's 14 feet deep from the, from the carriage house to the house. And then the, the width of it is, bear with me just for a moment, 16 and a half feet to the outside edge. And, and it's, it's air conditioned and HVAC. Yeah, yes, it's totally conditioned. And we, it actually will be designed, it'll have stone floors, it'll have a wood ceiling, it'll, it'll look like it was exactly what it was, that it was, it was a, uh, so uh, a it, portion of the house that was, that was closed in. So that room has a purpose besides just a breezeway between the garage? Yeah, there, I mean, they had a really stingy mud room right here, so they were, were actually delighted to have a larger room that they, could, that they could actually, you know, put coolers and all sorts of stuff in, to, just to, you know, just as a staging area to, uh, to come and go. Okay. And then the third item, um, in, in discussing with the city, I did find out uh, that one of my assumptions was incorrect on this property. Uh, because this property is under 40,000 square feet, there's a, it, it, the setbacks are, um, are dictated by, I believe it's called the four tenths rule. Um, and so I actually had more of a severe setback uh, on one side or the other than I thought. And so there used to be in the previous submittal, there was a master bathroom uh, addition that went off to the side of the house. And since I don't have that much width anymore on my, with my setbacks, I've actually incorporated the master bath into the house. So the, the, uh, the front of the house has actually gotten a little more compact. Um, so where we used to have this addition off to the side right here, it's, it is now incorporated into the house. So it actually has a narrower um, uh, front elevation. So wait, that, that elevation that we're looking at is not the elevation that's going to be built? Or? No, that's it. That's it. It's just that, the, that's the it, okay. Yeah, this, this came up. This is a okay. change that you didn't discuss at all, but it's something I found out while I was, right. uh, while I was uh, researching the, the garage. Well, <clears throat> I think it looks very nice. Fits in. I, I, I see that that bump out. I'm looking at an older plant from November. There was a bump out to the right. Yeah, there, there, there was a one story addition basically yeah. over here, which is, uh, now, which is now gone. I see. OK, I got you. OK. Um, could you go to the the the, uh, the rear uh, elevation? This okay, um, and and thank you for the 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 plan showing the, um, the the lot plan and so forth and the, the proximity to neighbors. That was very helpful and it mitigated any concerns I had on the the first floor of all those windows. Mm -hmm. However, and you know, others please chime in if you think this is an issue. It's that center portion with those. Those those big windows on the second floor. Does anyone see that as the potential light pollution issue for surrounding neighbors? I'm just are asking. You, the, are you talking about these windows? There? No, no. The, the rear, throughout, rear, rear, this, th those uh, in, in the so center. That, that's actually that that's actually a a story and a half room. So that's all one room. Okay, that's that still doesn't address my, my question. Yeah. In, in the center, I, just want, I just want to make sure you understand that's not like two floors. Right. It, in, in the center portion, those three windows that are over, I guess, the those lower three windows. Right here. Yeah, it's the upper part of that that I think is still a lot, a lot of window. That's my only concern. If it's just me, I'm fine to let it pass, but I just want to bring that up with other board members to get a point of view. Oh, I think to eliminate them would, would destroy the design. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It would, it would, it would change the design, of course, but that's, that, that's a side issue from my perspective. John, I will tell I will tell you, and I know this has nothing to do because with, with future, but I will tell you this client hates chandeliers and she hates recess lights. And so everything is going to be done with lamp lighting. It doesn't mean no, somebody can't come in later and do it. I understand. But. Yeah, I don't, I, that, that, yeah. I, I think. And what's the height just uh, of the? Um, that 
the, that uh, to the the lower windows are at uh, I believe they are at nine feet. So they're looking at like fifteen feet. Yeah, we're looking at about fifteen feet because the ceiling in that room is around sixteen feet tall. Yeah. And it's a flat. It's a flat ceiling, or a. It is. It is a flat ceiling. Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I would oh, like to okay. see the so top. If, if if there were recess lighting in the ceiling, they would shine down, not out. That's right. But we're, she's we're, got, not, we're not going. We're not going to be doing any. I can. I know that. I'm hearing you. But, but if there were recess lighting, it would be shining down. Then it, that's not a projection issue. And then if it's all lamp lighting on the ground floor, those shaded lamp lighting issues. It's just it's just it's just lamp lighting at human level. Okay. All right. I just I'm just asking the question. So I, I, I no, it's, no, it's a good question. If there were a gigantic chandelier from a vaulted ceiling hanging in the middle of that window, I would share your concern. But I think from a design standpoint, light standpoint, this 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 time it doesn't bother me just because I don't think that's the intention of the lighting plan here. Satisfied. Okay. All right. Uh, any public comment? Uh, let's just see. Nope. No hands up. Okay. Uh, so it sounds like the board is generally in, in favor. So uh, without any objections from the board, I would move that we accept the uh, applicant's request and plans is submitted. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Second by Peter. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. I heard Sarah and John, your hand was up and Mark. So uh, it's unanimous. Okay, Greg, thank you and have a ha happy new year. Thank you so much. Happy new year, y'all. You too. You. <laughs> Good luck on the house. Okay. Okay. Now we've got three driveway gates. Um, so let's see what we got here. All right. I don't know if everybody's going to be here. Uh, John uh, Quitwood at 102 White Street. I don't think he was here the last time. I don't have any hands up this time either. OK. So again, uh, we'll just hold it over without any prejudice to the next meeting. I know we don't have to vote on that, do we, Alice? We should no. Okay. No. Um, okay. And second is that of Karen Williams at 127 Wicked Wickapog Road for driveway gate. Karen or somebody representing Karen. Gosh, I'm not seeing hand up again. Okay. Again, same thing. Uh, we'll adjourn that without prejudice to our next meeting. Uh, do we have to vote on that, Alice? Uh, no, that's fine. Okay, great. Um, and finally, a uh, uh, hand just went up. Diane Pasito. I know we're not going to. That's the next one. Diane, okay. she, she's next <laughs> on the list, and she has been very diligent about submitting stuff and follow up. So, um, you think thank you. one o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, the next application is that of Diane. Uh, we haven't had a break yet. You know, uh, <laughs> at 172 Somerset Avenue for driveway gate. So Diane, step forward, please. She is in. Hi, Diane. Hi, Hi everybody. Hi, Hi everybody. Hello, Diane. Tell us who you are, where you live. and. My name is Diane Pasito. I live at 172 Somerset Avenue. And I'm here to seek approval for driveway gates. Um, just as a bit, a bit of background, um, my sister and I purchased this house in um, 1997, and it was a quiet community on the western edge of the village. We were um, welcomed by year-round residents at the time. We were part-time residents, and now, you know, fast forward 25 years, I'm the full-time resident and welcoming the uh, the new residents in the community. There's one big difference between the community 25 years ago and now, and that is the traffic on Somerset Avenue, which has gotten a bit out of control in terms of volume and speeding and running at the stop signs. All and right, the village, well, is, yeah, the village is aware. I mean, I, I was going to say, uh, I have yeah. a feeling you are uh, <laughs> contacting the trustees as, as you should. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the village is aware, and my neighbors have gotten together and written letters, and we know it's part of a traffic study, so right. we're aware of that. But okay. it leads me to the primary reason for the gates, which is um, that of a that of the safety uh, concern for the children of friends and relatives who visit my home um, frequently. The stop sign in front of my house and the one across the street um, are regularly bypassed. Uh, many tickets have been issued for this offense. Okay. The right. second reason for the um, installing of the gate is my health. You know, three years ago, I was diagnosed with a uh, mycobacterial lung infection. I had a piece of my lung removed. I was on um, intravenous antibiotics for six months and oral antibiotics. And anyway, I never want to go through that again. We don't know the reason that I have this um, condition, but I am deathly afraid of the deer born um, diseases. And um, living right next to the village green, um, the deer like to party in my front yard. So a gate would be um, keep out the deer and provide an extra level of safeguard for my health. So in summary, I'm looking for a safe environment and a layer of protection for my health. My home is a welcoming home. I, I love the people in my community. I have friends on Somerset and Pleasant and we uh, socialize regularly. And my neighbors are supportive of my installing this gate for safety and health reasons. Okay, so uh, now that we know a lot about you, uh, tell us about your gate, uh, and we are interested in you as well. So, but uh, tell us about the, the gate. Uh, it's and you you did share with us and Kat, you should have the. Uh, no, that's one I don't have. Okay, I I sent it to you. Um, later on because diane was nice enough to say my request and i sent it to you separately if not i will I, no i don't have another email from you just that dropbox email really? hmm. absolutely I, not let me see if i can do it unless you have it on your computer diane i do not uh, right. let's see. Uh, well, I, I just I sent it to you so I could get it. I know, I know, I know. Now, now, you, now you're testing my computer skills. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, or you could test mine. <laughs> okay, Hold on a see. second. Let's see. Uh, Diane, Diane. Um, if I go, let's see. We have to get a picture of the driveway. No, we got the picture of the driveway. Uh, ah, there it is. You got it? Uh, yeah, so. Kat, let's see. Mm -hmm. I want to share my screen, correct? Okay, so you first choose the picture um, uh, yeah, and then you click it. on share screen. Okay. Choose which view you want on your share screen and then on the right, you'll click share again. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get the share screen. Yep. Yeah, and the picture is there. And then share screen one more time. There you go. You got it. <laughs> okay. So that's the gate. Now let's let's start with the picture of your driveway. Okay. So that's your driveway. Right. And you want to put a gate and where on the property? So, so the 18, you know, with the 18 foot setback, the requirement. So it would go um, yep, exactly there. Some yep, 18 feet back. Okay. Right. The gate is going to look like this. Yep. Okay. And you're showing that it's six feet high on the columns. It's about how high here? Would that be about five and a half feet? And that looks about five and a half. Yeah. Okay. And the spacing, the spacing is the widest space right? it's pretty wide yeah because it's, it's not about privacy it's about you know safety right okay so these are the the basic you have you have one inch pickets and three inch openings approximately. Th thank you okay and it's painted white and the material aluminum. aluminum okay all right so i think that's and there are no lights going to be put on it correct correct um will there be any out any mechanism to open it up yes uh what type of mechanism it's a um let's say i'll read you it's uh do you want the name of it no what we're most concerned about is whether it's going to be visible from the street in other words uh particularly in that neighborhood where there aren't gates 
Yeah. Not very many. Uh, we would prefer not to see any external mechanism like a, like a gooseneck in the drive. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I don't think that's the plan. I mean, there's, there's going to be a mechanism where I can get out if I need to, and there's an exit device, but um, I, I don't recall seeing anything like you're talking about. So, yeah. so the mechanism to open it will be where? On the inside. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, but when you drive up to the gate, do you push a button in your car and the gate opens? It, it's going to be mechanical, yes. But, but is it mounted how on do you the post? It? How do you activate it to open when you drive up to the gate? Um, well, 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 we, well, hmm. I, I was under the impression that it would be on my phone, like a, like a phone thing. But okay. it, that's if, possible. If there, there are if there, ones. If, if there is a keypad, if there is a keypad that's necessary, could it be um, incorporated in some landscaping so that it's not so visible? Uh, well, actually, I thought you were going. Could it be incorporated in the column? And if if you had said that, yeah. The, Say, hey, that's a good idea. Oh, uh, is it? Well, you tell me. You tell me. <laughs> uh, right. I'm not an expert. You guys are. All right. Uh, particularly in this neighborhood, and uh, uh, I dare, I'm maybe speaking for the board, if it was either weight activated, light activated, so that when you drove up, it opened up without any external mechanism, or if you said it was activated by a phone, uh, that's yeah. what we don't want to see, Diane. And what we would uh, uh, base the approval on is no exterior um, freestanding mechanism. This okay, but I, yeah, but so so what if that's, I don't know, I'm not the kind of the engineer for this, but what if that is a necessary element of it? Can it be incorporated somehow in the design so that it's not, it's not I don't want it sticking out either, to be honest with you, that's going to look kind of... Right. So, so either, we know that's the that's the question. You you need to determine how you're going to operate it from the entry point yeah. and include that in your design because this is incomplete at this point. So so you want to see where this um, keypad is going to be located and like shrubbery around it? Is that uh, no? I, actually, what, what we're saying and maybe we're not being directed enough um, that we would not wish to approve a gate that had a external gooseneck. You know those keypads that yeah yeah feed in front of the fence, and so you lower the window and you stick your hand out and blah, yeah blah. yeah yeah. Uh, radio frequency operated, uh, light activated, uh, weight activated, uh, or um, a keypad with the column itself are all fine. But right, okay, so it could be it, any one of those things are fine. It's just not the gooseneck. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, fine. Yeah. And, just, and no free, just no freestanding keypad. No freestanding keypad. Then that's what we'll do. I mean, you guys are the experts. Okay. So now, no uh, freestanding keypad. Right. I so gen generally, when we see a gate design, it's it's more robust than than this. Uh, I don't know if it's an issue for the board members when I say robust with more detail. Plain um, is fine. It's a simple, okay. yeah, that's, I'm a simple person. I just like simplicity. Okay, so I, I can, uh, and Alice, I'm going to look for you on this. I mean, generally, if, if it's a design, if, if the board approves the design, when I sign the papers, I will put on there no external gooseneck. Um, if that's fine with you, Great. Otherwise, if we need something from Diane showing us where the mechanism actually is in the column, that's um, you know. that's fine by me. We've we've done this before. It's in the okay. minutes, so okay. it's you know it's part of the Great. record of the approval. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important to point out that if if this gate is approved, which it sounds like it it will be, it's solely based on the design and the context within the yes. neighborhood. It's that has nothing to do with all of the reasons. Yes. Which which would be reasonable, but it has nothing to do with the, the need for the gate. It's right. only our purviews over the design and the appearance of the gate. So, the, yes, I just think it's so for the thank you, the John, to say that. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks, John. Well, it, it was important to me to explain after 25 no, years. I, I, don't yeah. I, I, okay, I get it. I get it. I, 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 I understand too. I've lived in the village for many years and seen the same change you've seen. 
I just want to make it clear to anyone yeah. else who may be viewing this meeting that I understand. <laughs> too much yes. information. Too much information. <laughs> TMI. Yeah. Okay. So, um, any public comment? I don't see any, Jeff. Okay. Uh, so I will move that we approve the uh, the application of D Diane Posito, Posito uh, for driveway gate as submitted with the provision that there's no external gooseneck or mechanism and any mechanism would otherwise be uh, contained in the column or uh, not visible. Okay, um, do I have a, is that sufficient, Alice? <laughs> or sufficiently complicated? Uh, anyway, do I have a second on that? Second. Second by John, by Mark, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you, Diane. Thank you very much. Okay, great. So sorry, that Sarah, were you also an eye on that? What's that? Was Sarah an eye on that? I just didn't hear her. Yes, I did. Yes, yes, I, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jack. So that concludes our agenda, agenda and list of hearings for this evening applications. Um, I have one thing for folks to, to think about. Um, we don't have to go in great detail tonight, but uh, obviously the last meeting took a very long time and it was a late evening for all of us. Um, so uh, I think we, you know, starting earlier, uh, I think we'd all be in favor of that. Yep. Uh, the question is how early? Um, and th they range from either meetings during the day uh, or uh, meetings earlier, whether it be four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, but seven o'clock a bit late. One more comment. Yes. Some can't run afoul sometimes, of the planning board. Sometimes the planning board is on the same day, only, only sometimes. Yeah. So you would have to uh, move around that if you're planning on going around five o'clock is their meeting. So yeah. Or okay. otherwise change the dates that we meet, which I think it's, in the, is, it, is that a, in the code itself? I have no idea. No. no. But in any event, okay. I, I, in any time, I mean, six o'clock would be fine with me, but any time before that, I, I have a full time real job that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that and that is a problem. You want to be fair to the public and the applicants as well, so that they can attend. All right. So six would be great earlier, but it'd be problematic. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what we needed to hear. All right, Jackie. Uh, you and I can can work on that and get Kate involved, Kat involved as well. So, okay, anything else folks or Alice? Nope. Happy New Year. No. Happy New uh, Year. Yes. Oh, Happy moved. New Year. I have a question, but maybe I'll, I'll, I'll address that separately with, with okay. you. Okay, great. So yes, uh, the board and I wish everyone a Happy New Year and a healthy one. And we look forward to the day when we can get back together in person. God a number will. of reasons. So, okay, with that, I move that we uh, conclude the and close the meeting of the Board of Architectural Review and Historic Preservation on this December 28th. Uh, all in favor? I mean, do I have a second on that? From second from John, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.